Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Michael. Today we're going to be taking our FG Waco Simple Glider and Super Size. So in our last video, Stefan got to experience the FPV chair and also fly the Waco for the first time. This time we're gonna take a little bit of a different twist. We're gonna supersize this Waco here, as you can see. But also our friend David's gonna be designing a power pod that's gonna help us take off the ground. This is gonna be really cool because later on, if this all flies and works good, we're gonna be doing something called a snag launch with the big monster C47 and the giant Waco. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow up the design. Uh, you're gonna build it? Yes, I'm gonna build, paint it, and then hopefully Dave will have the power pod system designed and ready to go. We have a lot of work to do. So what have you done so far? So basically we have started with like, we, we use a lot of box bars. Mm -hmm. So we started with a box bar and then glued the wood formers on the side of it. Yes. Just to give it extra more stability. And also I glued the two less important, I guess, ridges down to hold the form of the wing. So and we now can I, fold it over. Yes, nice. now I just need to fold it over, extra hands. Okay, you ready? Yes, I am ready. The question is, am I ready? Probably not. <laughs> All right. You feel good about that, right? Yes. And squeeze. And lay, and squeeze, and lay. Yes. How do you feel about this? Do you think it's done? I think so. Yes. Listen, I'm not gonna toot my own horn here, but it didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways. Are <laughs> you ready to clear this, bro? Yes. All right. Down the seam. Now let's hope this wing snaps back into place like it did before. Ready? Yes. Snap. Oh, oh yes. Feel the glue. Circular. All right, so what we got next? What's next is we're building a fuselage tail, assembling the whole thing, putting electronics in it, and then flying it. Let's go. Ready here first. So one thing with flight tests is we not only like crazy projects, but we love celebrating history and some of the crazy marvels of science that came to be during World War II. One thing that was a real problem back in World War II was getting troops, artillery, and equipment into combat zones. That problem was solved with this plane right here, the Waco CG-4A. Now this plane first came to be in 1942. This glider had many different purposes from carrying troops to carrying even jeeps, artillery, and equipment, even in some cases rescuing people through a snag launch that we're gonna hopefully recreate in the near future. Imagine this, a 3,900 pound airplane cruising about 73 miles an hour, low to the brim, getting dropped off behind a C-47, having to glide in the battle. Now one of the common concerns was if this had cargo in it, and say the pilot had to crash land it, that the cargo would break loose and come and crush the pilot. They had a clever pulley system where if that happened, the actual cockpit would leverage up and actually slig the pilots out of the way as the cargo thrust forward. That was really good until the pilot ended up crashing against trees and the cockpit couldn't move. Now this model has a lot of really cool scale lines, but we also wanted to create this model to be a great trainer. We love it when people fly together, create memories together. So our hope was to partner this with the C-47. So maybe if you had someone you're getting a hobby, maybe one of your children, maybe a good friend, one person could build a more complicated model and then tow up the very simple entry level model to give that person the first experience with RC flight. Both the C-47 and the Waco Simple Glider are gonna be available in our store. As a matter of fact, if you're watching, they're available right now, along with our build videos. And if you haven't checked out our tech channel, make sure you do so because the build videos and the assembly instructions are all gonna be there. We're not done with this. We're gonna be flying the Big Waco, and if you guys like the looks of the Big Waco enough, make sure you leave it down in the comments because maybe we'll even make a kit for that. All right, we're just about done with the build. Let's get back to it. All right, so while the guys are messing around with this crazy flying project, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor this episode, and that is our friends over at Dr. Squatch. So our friends at Dr. Squatch came up with an unbelievable product called the Dr. Squatch Soap Star Wars Collection. This is inspired by Star Wars, as you can see here, with an unbelievable box. We're going to unbox and jump in right now. So the unboxing is unreal. Check this out. Ah, how awesome is that? You've got four soaps, right? Two light side, two dark side. And you've also got this unbelievable mural up here with Darth Maul, Darth Vader, Master Yoda, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is phenomenal. And so to break this down, you've got four sets. Only Hope Soap, Wisdom Wash, Dark Side Scrub, and Ruthless Rinse, 
all based on the different characters. All right, so for me, I'm pretty positive guy, so I'm gonna trend a little bit more towards the light side instead of the dark side. All four of them are really cool. Personally, I trend a little bit towards the Wisdom Wash. I love the Lotus Leaf, it smells amazing, but they're all really cool scents. Obviously, they all have a little bit different aroma to them. One of the things I kind of trend to with the light side soap is that smell, it smells amazing. And first and foremost, when you shower with them, my wife loves the smell. She loves to hug me and smell me and all that kind of stuff. My kids love it. They're like, oh, Daddy, you smell so good, which is awesome. And then on the dark side, you have a more musky scent and a heavier grit, right? So there's no grit in the light side. There's a heavier grit on the dark side. And the thing that I like most about that is when you're scrubbing, you're also exfoliating, right? So you're taking away all that dead skin. You're getting that nourishing feeling and you come out of the shower and you're feeling great. Also, one quick note, I'm gonna show you what's inside this box here a little bit. So once you take these out, you've got all four of your bars, your scents, but look at this sick packaging inside this box. You see that? all the different lightsabers for all the different characters. So, and if you're a Star Wars fan, you're gonna love this box, the way it's laid out. It looks fantastic, feels great, but these little attention to details make it even cooler. All right, so once you've chosen the dark side or the light side, you get to have those different experiences, whether you're more of that fresh scent, smooth kind of feel, or whether you want more of that exfoliating, smoky scent of the dark side. Secondly, after you shower with like really quality, good soap that have things that aren't harmful to your body, there's no toxins, etc. you not only feel better, right, and you smell better, first and foremost, but you have more confidence to know that you're not putting things in your skin or in your body that shouldn't be there, which is one of the best things about the Dr. Squatch brand. Now, obviously, everybody's different, right? So you gotta make the decision for yourself, whether you go with the light side or the dark side and which one works best for you. All right, so now you've gotta hurry up and order the new Star Wars soap collection by Dr. Squatch before they run out. So click the link in the description below to check out the collection now. So huge shout out to Dr. Squatch on these new soaps and scents. And also thanks to them for partnering with us on this episode. Without them, we wouldn't be here doing what we do. Also thanks to you guys for watching the content. All right, so now I'm gonna take all these sweet soaps, put them back in my box, and I'm gonna go check and see what these guys got going on with this crazy glider. Let's go check. All right, what are we up to? All right, uh, we're getting ready to fly the giant Waco Troop Glider. See what How you feel about this, guys? Um, it should go pretty smooth. It's actually calm out today. We just gotta worry about the river because it's a bit raging. We had a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah, dude, I saw that. <laughs> you gotta watch out. All right. So, so you, what do you tell them a little bit what let's... you got going on here. Let's go to the left. Left, so. I between think. the pole and the tree? Yeah, yeah. So. It's either between the pole and the tree or the tree or the birdhouse and the pole. Yeah, I think there's more space here. Over there, but we got more run out that way. Yeah. If it so, does actually work well. Yes, I think you're right. I think there's more space here. I'm going to give you a good old chuck. Yeah, I'm trying to hit the throttle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a glider, bro. This does not have a motor, so. Okay, yeah. You ready? Yep, you guys ready? Count down? You want me to? Okay. Okay. Yep. Three, two, one, go! Oh, what a beautiful launch. Oh, oh pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh, turn, 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 turn. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, over his head. <laughs> <laughs> well That's done, Dave. Fine, Great. Good work, buddy. Oh, <laughs> that felt, that felt yeah, good. That one, that one was real nice. Yeah. It actually nice. started to lift a little bit. Yeah. Great toss, great flying, pound it. Found it, found it. Hey, what's next? Um, yeah, I think he's gonna go paint it. Yeah, and you're actually going to uh, be putting a motor on it, right? Yeah, yeah, hopefully um, if everything goes right, we're gonna make a, a motor that pops up. When you use it, the motor will flip up, and when you shut the throttle off, it'll hold back down. And Well played. Well, let's get to it. Let's do it. So if you guys watched our previous video where Stefan actually got to fly FPV with a smaller Waco, it was an amazing experience. This time, we want to take a little bit different approach, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, towing worked out great. Yeah. We, we had no problems there. But with the larger version, we just wanted to try to take a little different approach. So we went with a powered version. Very cool. What'd you do here? Um, we ended up uh, 3D printing a mount to the top of the wing and 
basically gravity does the rest. Um, you hit the throttle, it lifts itself up, does what it needs to do, pulls it through the air, and when you let off the throttle, it falls back down. Um, unfortunately, we had some issues trying to 3D print originally. Yes. This was our first print. I, I was worried about it because there's such a little surface actually connecting to the build plate on the printer and it ended up falling over in the middle of the night. So I did some redesign and came up with a support method that worked. Didn't take too terribly long to print and it worked out good. It looks fantastic. So now all we gotta do is we gotta go ahead and adjust this basically to find out what angle of attack here we need from the motor to be able to make it lift off and that's gonna be done out in the field. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll figure it out. Love it. All right, friends, we're gonna give this a shot here. We don't know what the angle of attack's gonna do quite yet, but the only way we're gonna find out is put in here. If not, you can throw me. <laughs> That'll work. Here we go. Dad, this thing's cool, man. Dude. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of wind out here again. Dude, I think we may need even more pitch than that. Pitch back. Yeah, can you double over that little guy? Yeah, yeah. All right, so what seems to be the issue here? We just need a little bit more uh, squish. Squish. A, a little more, uh, well, a little more upward angle. So essentially what you're saying, Josh, is that this this is coming too high up and yeah, you want so, it to stop here? Yeah, we want this to to help lift it up. But the, the problem is, is if it was if it was back here, like it'd be really easy to tell what to do. If it was up here, you'd go like this. We're right in the middle. Right. So we're <laughs> right. kind of like in a in a circumstance where it's it's a little bit funny. Yeah, it makes sense. Ready? Yep. Oh, baby. Go, Come on, go. yes! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Jay Biggs. Wow. Too much throttle, bad things happen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that! Yeah. Alright, we'll figure out we'll figure out the, the motor angle, but it's working. And it flies amazing. That's huge, dude. I'm gonna just take the sucker up nice and high and enjoy it for what it's meant to do, and that's glide. Glide for days. Glide for days. I don't know what it is about this design, but it has to be one of the most stable gliders we've ever made. And it shouldn't glide as well as it does. <laughs> what do you think? Dave? Yeah, it looks great. I'm just going to take it to the moon. Beauty. And I want to make us have to end the episode without landing it, because I'll probably crash. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> Look, there's you're up with the hawk, man. Dude, oh, you're with the bird. Above you. I don't know how close you are, because I can't tell you so how far up. He's quite a bit higher. It's not even okay. moving, it's just No, it's not! <laughs> hey, is it hard to chase because it's not moving? <laughs> is that a thing? We've got two chase squads on this thing, and they're literally just hovering. Just doing circles around them. <laughs> it's just, is it even going down? I don't think it is. All right, you guys gotta leave in the comment. Let us know if you wanna see a big, monstrous Waco glider in your future. Maybe yes. even as plans. Ooh, I like the way you think. Yeah. So speaking of plans, at the FTCA, we're gonna be releasing limited amounts of plans. A lot of you guys have wondered where it's free downloadable plans. We're making it a perk. So a lot of new releases coming out, especially from myself, will be released as free plans after the release. So perfect. I think you're actually going up. It does feel like I'm going up, but it also feels like I'm going backwards. Like, yes. <laughs> I, there's no throttle to this, and it's just not going down. Yeah. It's just bobbling. <laughs> As Josh said, Dave, you stay right there. We're going to go grab some dinner, okay? All right, uh, bring me back something good. You want some fries? Okay, we'll get you some fries. You know, I want to try some aerobatics. Ooh, that's you a great decision. Give it a shot? Yeah, can I? Yeah, do, it, okay. do it, do it, do it. Big loop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. All right, dead stick. Loop We're going to do a dead stick roll. Oh, 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 yes, get oh, it! Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the slowest, lazy, awkward roll of all time. It was time. awkward. That was great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just put her in for a lady. That's a great idea. Oh, there you go. That lift is just real. <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. That's the most yeah. Good. Good awesome. job. Well done, good time. Awesome, my friend. Great right. job on the build, Mike. Friends, we are not done with this episode here. We have one more challenge here. We are going to recreate something in history that was really awesome. It was when a C47 would actually snag the tow line of a Waco CG4 and tow it up. We're going to try to recreate that for you. Also, look for the release of this plane along with three different size C47s coming up all in our new flight test store. Check that out, link down below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.